I want to go back to our code where we started to add in the drag force for our um, projectile because we assumed that the drag force was determined by the velocity of the ball as it's sailing along, which is true. The faster the ball moves, the more drag force you're going to have. But the velocity is actually here the velocity of the ball relative to the air. Because yes, if the air is nice and calm and doesn't have any wind speed, then you're going to have ball dot velocity here. But if you have a headwind or a tailwind, that's going to impact the drag force, right? Because a headwind is going to make it more like these inner trajectories and like this outer trajectory. So it's going to increase the drag force. Whereas a tailwind is going to actually make it go farther. Right? It's going to work with the motion of the ball instead of against it. And so what I thought we could do today would be to add in the effects of a headwind. So let's suppose I've got a headwind of, uh, what kind of velocities are we working with here? Um, we're working with velocities on the order of 10 to 20 meters per second. So let's say I've got one that is going in the negative x direction with a speed of 5 meters per second, 0 in the y, and 0 in the z. What I would need to do here Instead of using ball.velocity, I need to use the relative velocity. The relative velocity is just going to be ball.velocity plus the headwind, right? Because if my ball.velocity is going this way, then my headwind is going to cancel this way because I want the velocity of the ball as it's seen by the air. And so what I can do here is take in my uh, uh, drag force here. Instead of ball dot velocity, I can have my relative underscore velocity. And same thing here for my unit vector, I'm going to need relative velocity. So I'm just replacing the ball's original velocity with the relative velocity. Uh, let's click run on this and see what kind of difference we get. So this is comparing this with different drag coefficients. I think what we'll actually want to do is change what the headwind is. So let's do this. Instead of looping over the drag coefficient, let's say for headwind x in range, uh, let's go from 5 to 20 in steps of 1. Uh, and actually, let's make this negative, negative, negative. There we go. I want to make headwind equal to headwind x. Oh, and I will need to set my drag coefficient. So let's set uh, drag coefficient equal to, what was the starting one? Starting one was 10. Yeah, let's make it, let's make it 15 to start with. How about that? And now what I want to do instead of printing the drag coefficient, I want to print the headwind. And let's just print the whole vector, head underscore wind. Okay, let's do this here. So there's my initial one. So I'm pushing back with negative 5 meters per second. Uh, oh dear, do I not want to add this? Because now it's going farther. I think I, oh, maybe I want to subtract those. I thought I would have... It's going farther. Oh, it's going farther because the drag force is actually getting weaker there. Okay, let's subtract it then. There we go. So this is what we do in modeling. We put something in, we see if it works. If it doesn't get what you expect, well, then maybe something went wrong somewhere. You notice as we increase the head when we're going negative 5, negative 6. Okay, this is what I expected here. Negative 7. We're getting this pushed back more. Right, I mean, it's making a really significant difference here. Um, so each one of these steps represents a change in the headwind by one meter per second. And I dare say those are about evenly spaced, which is really interesting, right? I'm getting about the same distance each time. But what do you notice is happening here? Here I keep going forward, but here I actually turn around. So at this point with a headwind of negative 16, the ball actually picks up so much drag going in the backwards direction and actually turns around and gets blown over, blown across by the wind, which is pretty cool stuff. Um, let's try out one more thing. Let's try adding in a little bit of head, a little bit of wind 
in the y direction. So let's suppose the, the wind is actually pushing down toward the earth. Let's make that pretty weak. Let's make that a negative one here. <clears throat> because that's going to end up causing it to, to land sooner. So I think you're going to start to see the turnaround happen sooner. That is interesting how those, they appear pretty evenly spaced. I, I would expect that relationship to be a little bit more complicated than linear. Maybe we need a, a wider range of values to actually be able to investigate whether those are evenly spaced. Yeah, that might be a little bit shorter than this there. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's turning around just a little bit sooner with that... Uh, headwind with the y component there. Uh, let's try a let's try a negative five there. Make that just a little bit stronger. So you imagine an, an, an air fan kind of blowing, pushing this thing down at, at this angle now. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Oh, they're a little bit closer together now because I've increased the, the magnitude. That spacing's a little bit closer. Uh, let's up this a little bit more. Let's say we go to negative 15. Make this a very strong wind. Oh, that's really interesting. Now they're really clustering together because they're getting knocked down more by the wind. Awesome. So now you've got a little bit more accurate model of the drag force with how it depends not just on the, on the velocity of the ball, but also on the velocity of the wind going around the ball. So that'll wrap up our series on projectiles. I hope this has been a fun journey for you that you've learned a little bit about physics and also a little bit about computer modeling. Uh, there are lots more forces to explore. There's gravity out in space. There's uh, spring forces. There's intermolecular forces. And your goal when you're doing this modeling is to just trade out the force that you have here and you can explore anything you want in classical mechanics.